Men as we are, we are mostly creatures of circumstance, confined to the sensations of the outer world, and the joys and sorrows of life are but echoes of outward events. This slavery is due to the domination of the body. Greedy of enjoyment and afraid of sorrow, we come to depend on others, and, receiving our joys and sorrows from others, we suffer endless misery and humiliation. This state of imprisonment is the perennial condition of man. But the longing to be free is lodged in such a deep layer of the human heart that a thousand arguments are helpless to uproot it. Sri Aurobindo, Prison and Freedom, an essay, 1909. It is strange, very odd, that humanity has arrived this far along its journey and yet still clings to such antiquated thinking. Even today, vast numbers of people still think that when they die, that's it. They're dead. Gone. No more. Life after death of the physical body sounds incredible still for so many. Why should this be? Why do so many people continue to believe that life is a one-off transitory affair? It's a belief of separation. A life of a momentary blip in the vastness of things. It is time to change our thinking, in mass. That is, not just scattered individuals, but collectively, as a whole species. We have to relearn, to remember ourselves, in order to recognize that all life is intrinsically connected, as all life remains a part of the one unified source. Matter is a state of vibration. Just as water can be liquid, solid, and vapor, so too can frequency be energy fields, waves, and physical particles. Everything in manifestation has come forth through a change in energy frequency. Everything is vibration, the inventor Tesla said the same thing. Form comes into being from no form. At all times, form is related and connected to the energy state of no form. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Human life, in fact, all life, is more than that which our physical eyes can see. Our senses are limited, whilst they are contained within a state of perceptual slumber. That is, we each know, instinctively in our depths, that we are more than the physical vehicle we inhabit. Religions have been attempts at rebinding us to this lost knowledge of our innate existence within the infinite consciousness pool. The word religion comes from the Latin word religer, to bind. Through religious practices, we are being compelled to remember and recognize our inherent bond to the source, of which we are a manifestation at the physical energetic component. And yet, within our cultures, we are said to be spiritual, when we attempt to pursue these paths and practices of remembrance and bonding. However, why should it be deemed spiritual to be pursuing our natural heritage, our lineage of existence? To exist, is to be spiritual. For we are endlessly upon a path of the spirit, even when expressed through bodily matter. We are spirit soul incarnated. We are having a life experience through the vehicle of a physical body. To be alive, is to be spiritual for we are that spirit. Why do we define and categorize the spiritual as being something other, something apart? Why have we been denying ourselves for so long? It seems to me as if we have been running around chasing our own tails. As human beings, we have a tendency to get in our own way most of the time. Time then to step away from ourselves, in order to allow the vital flow of life energy to move through us, without the constant blockage. The tangible and intangible coexist, as aspects of the same thing. We are vital force, expressed as energy and matter at the same time. Spirit and biology coexisting as a merger. It is time to honor that mergence by healing our fragmentation. We have dropped the phone line and lost sight of the conversation. The conversation between self and self. They are one and the same, a part of and never apart from. It is this understanding that we now need to embrace if we wish to thrive as a species in physical embodiment. 
If we are unable to recognize these fundamental truths, then we are liable to slip out of alignment with our evolutionary path. And if we are out of resonance with our evolutionary journey, then we fall into stagnation, and ultimately, we fail to evolve any further. We come to the end of our physical line. Life goes on elsewhere, in other manifestations and expressions. Life always is, and will forever be. Where shall we be? Where shall we place ourselves within the infinite tapestry of living expression? There is a meaning to life. There is a meaning to everything, for existence is pure meaning. As the existential psychologists found out, a sense of meaning brings purpose and motivation into life. Yet rather than striving to seek out meaning, such as in peak experiences, we can begin from the foundation that life is intrinsically meaningful, from the very fact that we are alive. Whether acknowledged as part of the source, or whether as a pinpoint of physical expression, we are meaningful. We are pure existence. We are all that is, and all that ever will be. We are in a dance, a conversation, a relationship, with ourselves. You, me, everything. The fragmentation we see around us is only a perceived aspect of the wholeness, not apart from it. It is up to us to close that gap, to rejoin the party. It is time to find the way back home. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.